Good morning. Today is the uh, 10th of June and it's almost exactly two years since I bought this 2003 Rover 45 2 litre V6 Connoisseur. A lot of you will be very familiar uh, with this car on the channel but a lot of you like to see videos on it and uh, we've covered just under 13,000 miles since I picked this up. It was from a dealership in the north of England so uh, quite a long way to go to collect it and it had been there for a while. These aren't worth a lot of money uh, these, particularly these cars but they are actually very rare now. There are only around 60 of these taxed and on the road in this country at the moment uh, both in club and connoisseur trim out of a production run we think of around um, 700 were made the four cylinder 45s obviously are much more common than these um, but I like it and uh, let's uh, just take a brief look round at the car and just also point out some things that have needed attention or have gone wrong so there's uh, the first thing that's gone wrong that is the old inlet manifold which um, yes has been replaced with one uh, that was uh, off a car of similar age um, but didn't have a nasty plastic clucking noise which um, they do on the KV6 engine sometimes also under here we see the um, space ever spare that was actually purchased separately because I didn't get a spare wheel with the car the garage I think appropriated it for themselves also got bottles of coolant in there because uh, hmm we'll come back to that parking sensors don't work all the time that well but you know it's better than nothing actually because it's quite hard to see out the back when you're parking these are 16 inch um, Cosmos alloy wheels are standard on this model and various other Rover 45s they're very similar actually to Rover 200 BRM wheels tyres have all been replaced we might need to do the front ones actually again at some point had uh, um, rear calipers refurbished um, on both sides and new sets of, um, of pads I will also have to do the front discs again they don't look that bad but they are a little bit warped and so just going to be replaced actually quite soon there's a scuff on this bumper I'm going to have to get that seen to as well the bonnet actually just needs repainting whole bonnet needs repainting and part of the wing these are the original um, stone chips of the car nothing's happened to it but we are going to have to get this done it doesn't show particularly on camera but yeah, I can assure you it's there the V6s have a unique bumper plinth like this you can see it protrudes in the bumper and a unique lower grille with a little sort of uh, rubber thing down there as well on the bottom of the, uh, the front bumper one of the places these cars like to rust is actually just underneath where the front passenger sits and I can't really show you without lying on the floor but we're going to have to have this, uh, this car welded at that place because it's got a sunroof which makes it even worse and uh, yeah Mr Coleman, rubbish mechanic who many of you would have seen on the channel well he's one of the only reasons why I actually bought the car in the first place because I knew he'd be able to look after it for me and he has so it's going to him for a couple of weeks while he sorts some things out including that air conditioning has been regassed as well on this car which is good, a little place in Southampton did that for me for not much money Rear space in the car is actually quite poor. Uh, if you sort of kind of see here, haven't really, um, haven't really got a lot of room. I'm not going to get in because I don't really need to today. But at least you can use these massive kind of pockets at the back to put things in. And they've got a nice rear armrest. I'd love a beige leather interior in one of these. And oh, <coughs> excuse me, I'd love a beige leather interior in one of these. But you know, because these cars are so rare, you've got to get where you, you know, what you, uh, where you can get. And actually, this later Project Drive style interior. Also, you can see there's no little badges on the back of here. Another sign of Project Drive, and also no illuminated ignition barrel and all sorts of other things, and no wood on top of the door cards and all things like that. I actually quite like this interior. Um, I've grown to love it. Heated seats on this model, being a, a connoisseur with the uh, leather trim and this sort of little age axis. I'm sorry it's not that clean in here at the moment, just doing this uh, relatively quickly. 
mileage I will just show you. There's only two displays for your dumber tip. There's the miles the car is done and uh, also the the uh, fuel, sorry, the, 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 the trip, that's all you get. There's that and I'll just change hands quickly and put it on to, there we go, just under 78,000 miles. This radio has been replaced by one of the uh, my viewers, Russell, thank you Russell. Um, the uh, Rover 45 and MGZS owners community on Facebook is really good. Um, there's also the Rover 45 owners club that I'm part of too. And uh, when this car goes to Bromley Pageant in a couple of days, we'll be displaying uh, with a couple of other members of Rover 45 owners club. This clock is broken because they always are. Um, the rear headlining on that side is sagging a little bit. That's going to be fixed, as are these saggy door cards. That's uh, a really common problem on these cars. So yes, that's why Mr. Common's going to have this car for a little while. Very easy to use, idiot proof controls, um, which is what I like. Some of the minor controls aren't in the best position, they don't feel the highest quality. This um, mirror switch is straight out of the late 1980s Honda, I think. Um, these are going to go to stops and all kinds of things, and actually they don't feel too bad. You can change these for slightly nicer ones, the facelifted uh, 45s that came in in 2004, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I have, I have got a spare one of these as well if I ever need one. White dials because this is a post mid-2002 car with the Euro 4 compliant engine. Um, got an electric sunroof as well, the blind, that's very handy for filming. Seats are quite comfortable. Um, actually for long journeys for a car of this age. Glove box can take the secret mission documents, but at the moment it's got other stuff in it. Uh, the door pockets have all kinds of random stuff in them. I really should clear those out at some stage because it's a bit disgusting. I would prefer, you know, door cards with the uh, wood at the top, but you just gotta, uh, it's, it's gotta accept that that's not gonna happen all the time. Right, let's take a look at the lovely KV6 engine. So this is the 2 litre KV6 engine, there was also a 2.5 litre version available in cars like the uh, Rover, 40, uh, Rover 75 and the MG ZS 180. This application generates 150 horsepower. It's only available from uh, 2000 to 2004 in one of these cars. There were some uh, post facelift ones of these, very rare. Um, all the, the 45 V6s in this country were saloons, but in some countries you could actually get um, a hatchback version such as the Netherlands. I do need just to give this engine a little bit of a wipe, uh, just to get rid of the crud on the, on the uh, um, dipstick for example. The air filter is actually just here, it's one of the easiest air filters in the world to change, it takes about 20 seconds if you've got the right size. Coolant reservoir at the moment is uh, looking good, but we actually changed that a couple of years ago because um, they do tend to crack, that one's okay though and its levels is, is fine at the moment um, that hasn't always been the case because down in the V of the engine and you can't really see it uh, is the dreaded um, plastic thermostat housing or rather it was plastic, it's no longer plastic it's actually been changed in this car for a metal one I did have a, a reinforced plastic one but that also broke and leaked First one I had exploded all over the forecourt of the Sanyon dealership in Froome when we put up our Sanyon Tivoli. Um, it doesn't like the fact that it was being replaced so soon after we actually got the car. So there we go. Also the uh, little bit of linkage here for the uh, cruise control. It's, it's a vacuum operated cruise control system in this car. Uh, that was originally a plastic part, that little sort of metal rod that runs along there like this you can just about see next to that bolt um, that's now been changed for a uh, metal bit which is better a friend of mine Mr Partridge who you might have seen help me with this car on the channel as well um, he actually helped me do that core packs from this car needed changing about a year ago um, it's now got a whole new set of them they're not actually that expensive the front ones are really easy to do you can see you just need to take this plastic cover off and it's not a problem rear ones are down there um, it's not too bad but it's much it's uh, you know a bit more difficult but much easier than example on a Rover 75 with this engine. The uh, cam belts on this car and there are actually three of them they need changing about every six years or I think it's 60,000 miles. 
Uh, they were last done in 2018, so we're going to have to save up to have those done, I think, in a couple of years if we still have the car by then. Uh, we'll ha also have the auxiliary uh, drive belt done in this. So we've had a lot of things done to this car, actually, and um, there are still things to do. The reluctor ring on the ABS, I think, is causing a problem with the brakes. In addition to the cheap brake discs that I have, which need to be changed, the pads are OK. Um, so it'll have a full service. It'll have um, some shutter protection on the underside. It'll have some welding. Um, and hopefully the brakes will be sorted out and the, uh, you know, the headlining and the door cards and things like that. So lots to do and of course 29 miles per gallon isn't too much fun but always makes a nice noise. It's appeared on quite a lot of channels now. Um, Macklin's Motors, Furious Driving, JM on Cars, Fuel Power, um, Lot 76 Cars, um, Driven 24-7, the list goes on. Um, I think there are some more scheduled to do this car at some point as well, so there we go. Uh, it's not the one, of course, the NC book used to own. His was actually a um, pre-project drive uh, club model. I think it was on an X-plate, so it's quite an early one of these. That's now gone, unfortunately, to the big scrap in the sky. Thank you, as ever, to uh, Discount Rover MG Spares, who are a local company here in Southampton, who helped me keep this car on the road by uh, giving me discounts and all we need. The service items of this car have all been purchased from DMGRS of this particular um, six monthly interval one. We, we do six monthly intervals, a major service in, in the summer and a minor one in the winter and uh, they are wonderful people. We've actually had one of the cars from the chaps who run DMGRS my channel, the 2001 MGF and we hope to do more of them actually soon. Uh, they are very very helpful so I'll put a link in the description below and please visit the website um, to get all the parts you need for your MG Rover era car or actually quite a lot of cars either side of that too. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below. Um, I do hope that you've uh, enjoyed hearing about all these little bits. There's probably some more that I've forgotten as well, but uh, that's quite a good summary. And uh, I suppose we'll have to have another video once all this work's done and uh, see what Mr. Coleman's handiwork is like, which I'm sure it's brilliant, but uh, you know, um, some of you would like to see that and see if there's any change. Probably not too much cos cosmetically, but certainly it will feel like a different car to drive.